The Dark Base Pro 900 Wide Edition from Be Quiet is finally here with a modular design for ultimate flexibility, Silent Wings 3 140mm PWM fans, outstanding water cooling support, and so much more. The Wide Edition is available in limited quantities, so catch it before it's gone. You can learn more by clicking the link in the description below. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. I have been waiting for this video for a long time. This project has been in the works for several months, believe it or not, and it's finally coming to fruition. I'm super excited. This is actually a collaboration between me and uh, Fantex, or Fantex and I. Um, so they have provided a lot of this hardware, so huge shout out to them for making this possible. We are gonna be building the most epic custom water-cooled system that I have ever built. Uh, inside of their Enthu Elite chassis, which I guess isn't saying much because I've only built two custom water-cooled systems ever. But the system we're going to be building over the next couple weeks is going to trounce both of those by a friggin' landslide. And the point of all this, the purpose of this system, is to really showcase the pinnacle of top-end hardware that can be had here in 2017. This is about as good as it gets if, you're, if money is really no object, uh, because we are going to be assembling a more or less about a $10,000 PC by the end of all of this. So uh, it should be very exciting. I'm super excited. Uh, you should be excited too. I hope you're mentally prepared for the shit that's about to go down. It's gonna be glorious. On that note, let's quickly go over our list of hardware here because there's a lot to cover. Once again, starting with the Enthu Elite from Fantex. This is a beast of a case, guys. It has the most custom water cooling and radiator support of any case I've ever worked with personally, and we're gonna be utilizing it pretty much to its fullest potential today. It does have support for a dual system. You could do a dual system in this case. However, we're not gonna be doing that for this particular build. I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna be upset with me about that, but rest assured we are gonna forgo that option in place of more radiators, more water cooling hardware uh, to lower our thermals even further. So very excited to be using this case, of course. Uh, it looks absolutely fantastic all lit up and stuff if you've never seen it but um, more on that later. Additionally, our CPU of choice. Many of you guys are probably curious as to what platform I've decided to include with this particular build. I'm going Skylake X, guys. I'm going for the most cores and most threads on Intel's high-end desktop platform. Uh, we've got the Core i9-7980XE, which is an 18-core, 36-thread monster. Now, there's a question. To delid or not to delid? Do you want me to delid this and perhaps uh, apply some liquid metal as the folks over at Gamers Nexus have done in order to reduce the thermals uh, that much more. It's a risk that I might be willing to take if there's enough interest. Uh, of course, I don't think we'll need to, but it might still be cool just to delay and, and go through that process for this build. Now, of course, a $2,000 18-core CPU deserves to be mounted in a worthy motherboard, and I feel like there is no motherboard more worthy than the ROG Rampage 6 Extreme that we have here from Asus. I fell in love with this board as soon as I saw it at Computex this year. The RGB implementation that Asus has done underneath this sort of trans translucent plating is absolutely stunning to look at when it's all powered up and stuff. And there's just a ton of connectivity. We're gonna be mounting some M.2 drives to this guy. There's plenty of features here that I do not even feel equipped to, to, to read off right now because they're just so many. This box comes with like a thousand accessories. Hopefully it's a good overclocker as well. I can't imagine why it wouldn't be. Uh, of course, we're gonna see exactly how far we can push our 7980XE here. Uh, but that's of course for a later video as well. Now we will be pairing that motherboard and CPU with this amazing DDR4 kit from G-Skill. I have to give a huge shout out to those guys because they actually hooked it up with not a 32, not a 64, but a 128 gigabyte kit of their Trident Z RGB DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. Guys, this is incredible. This kit is blazing fast and we've got eight 16 gigabyte sticks in here to fully populate all the DIMM slots on our Rampage 6 Extreme. It's gonna be pretty bad ass. So thank you G-Skill for hooking it up there. Uh, additionally, we've got graphics cards. Well, right now we only have one, but rest assured the second one's on its way. We've got the uh, Strix GTX 1080 Ti OC from Asus. Thank you Asus for providing these. The cooler's amazing out of the box, which is why I'm it's sort of a bittersweet uh, moment where I'm gonna actually have to remove the already uh, robust cooler and replace it with a fancy water block. But uh, I'm sure I'll get over it pretty quickly. Uh, so that's gonna be pretty sweet. Two of these in SLIs, again, almost as good as it gets, unless you're talking maybe a Titan XP in, in SLI or something like that. 
but for the most part, it's gonna kick major ass. Additionally, we've got Power Supply, Enermax, Platimax, DF Platinum. It's an 80 plus platinum modular unit, fully modular, uh, with uh, just a super high rated efficiency, of course. It's a 1200 watt unit. It's gonna be able to power everything in our system. It's got a DF switch on the back, so during operation, you can hit that switch. The fan will actually uh, reverse and kick off any of the dust that's accumulated on the fan to keep it clean. And uh, the, the sleeve cables are actually gorgeous. They've got like sort of a white speckle thing going on, but unfortunately we won't be able to see them because we're gonna be using custom cables. Now storage is the other thing that we don't have on hand just yet. We're still waiting on uh, some M.2 drives from Samsung. Those are gonna be some 960 Pros, capacities of either 500 or one terabyte. Maybe we can get a two terabyte stick in here. That'd be pretty sweet. Um, but of course, we're probably gonna have one for boot and then the other for mass storage and games and things like that. Those are, of course, some of the fastest M.2 drives you can buy on the market right now, which makes them a perfect fit for this build. Moving on now to our expansive list of custom water cooling hardware. Fantex has hooked it up with their Glacier Series C350i. This is a CPU water block for Intel LGA 2011 uh, or 2066 or 1150 whatever sockets. And this water block is super sexy. It has RGB lighting, which can sync up with Asus Aura, MSI Mystic Light, etc. Um, it looks fantastic. At first I was like, oh, I don't know if I like it because I'm so used to seeing EK water blocks on everything these days. But the more I look at this and the more I work with this, the, the more I fall in love with it. It's really grown on me, just the overall aesthetic, and uh, it looks very well machined, super sturdy. Additionally, we're gonna be using Fantex's Glacier Series water blocks for the GPUs. They've got Strix Edition uh, water blocks for our cards here, for our 1080 Ti's. Also Glacier Series, super nice looking blocks, also have RGB implementation uh, that can sync up with various softwares. Now, not all of our custom water cooling hardware today is from Fantex, mind you. We do have some stuff from good old EK water blocks, including their X3 250 millimeter reservoir. This is just, just a standard acrylic tube reservoir, very popular option among the uh, custom water cooling community. Uh, this, is, uh, this does not have a pump, of course, so I actually have a pump on its way right now, also from EK. The model number escapes me at the moment, but uh, rest assured that'll be pairing very nicely with this guy. And radiators, radiators up the friggin' yin yang. Look at this, we've got two XE 360 millimeter radiators from EK. Two of them, okay, but that's not all. We also have two more 420 millimeter radiators. These are the CE series from EK Water Blocks. All four of these radiators will be fitting inside of the Enthu Elite by the end of this little build log here. We are radiating with radiators, ladies and gentlemen. We are pretty much filling up every orifice of the Enthu Elite with custom water cooling hardware to get temps as low as possible and uh, hopefully get the system as quiet as possible too. So um, if you guys think, again, if this is overkill, it certainly is. And finally, we've got fittings. We've got tons of fittings once again from Fantex. I can't show them to you guys right now, but there's probably there's probably like several, several dozen uh, fittings in here, all shapes and sizes. Uh, they are gonna be hardline fittings, of course. We're gonna be using PETG Hardline tubing, this stuff is uh, branded by, this is Monsoon. I've never worked with this brand before. All the other stuff on performancepcs.com was sold out. Uh, this had a fairly good rating and seemed like a good clear PETG option. So we're gonna be bending with this. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get around to bending tubes today, but certainly soon enough. All right guys, so there you have all the parts that we're gonna be using for this system with the exception of the radiator fans. I actually haven't picked out fans yet. I don't know what, what I want yet but uh, hopefully by part two, we can get that all ironed out. If you guys couldn't tell by now, um, this is gonna be a heavily RGB friendly system. I mean, we've got RGB on the water blocks, the motherboard, the RAM, etc. cetera. Uh, so we're gonna have a lot of flexibility once this is all said and done to play around in the software and Asus Aura or what have you, uh, and kind of just customize a bunch of different lighting profiles and so forth. So it's gonna be super exciting. I'm ready to start building, but before we actually get anything inside of the case itself, I mean, the last thing we want is to build inside of the Enthu Elite, fire it up with all the custom water cooling hardware and find out that something's defective and we have to undo all of our hard work. So what we're gonna do first is a test boot outside of the case just to ensure that all of our core components are working properly and then we can continue on with building inside of the case. Sound good? All right, three, two, one, let's go test boot. All right, 
right, y'all. So without much effort at all, we've assembled our test build outside of the case. We're ready to boot, or at least try booting. Uh, we've got surface mounted power button on the motherboard. I'm gonna go ahead and fire that up. Motherboard LEDs were uh, turning on just fine. And looks like we've got LEDs to our DDR4 modules. Ah, it's a, uh, oh, there we go. Splash screen. Success. Get into that BIOS. Oh, stupid message from the monitor. Hey, test boot success. Yes, very lovely. All right, beautiful. Yay, everything's looking good. Easy. Okay, looks like we've got a core idle temp of 33 degrees Celsius on our Core i9, which seems pretty normal. And uh, it's showing, oh, it looks like two of our dim slots are not registering with the modules here. Although I suspect once we set up XMP, it'll register just fine. But I think we can call this a successful test boot, ladies and gentlemen, and we are ready to go on to our next steps, uh, which include um, mounting the GPU blocks onto the graphics card. So we actually do have only one GPU right now. We're still waiting on the other one, as I mentioned, and we still need to test that one before we mount a water block to that. But this one's good to go. Uh, and, and I've used this card several times in the past, so uh, I think we are ready to start mounting that block to this GPU, and perhaps also we'll get around to mounting the CPU block onto our Core i9. Um, let's go ahead and do that now. Right, water block has been mounted. Looks fantastic on top of our GP102. Look at that. This thing's heavy. This thing weighs a ton, but looks sexy AF, bruh. Uh, you can see we've got our RGB cable hanging off here. We have a couple options for this. We could connect it to the case directly. There's a built-in RGB controller inside of the M2 Elite, or we can connect it to the 5050 header on our motherboard. Actually, I'm sure there's probably more than one uh, on the Rampage 6 Extreme or we could even connect it to the card itself. If you guys remember the Strix 1080 Ti actually has an RGB header right on the PCB. So we could do that too. Clearly we've got plenty of options, but we'll have to circle back to that in part two because we are all out of time for today. I really wanted to get some of the hardware installed into the chassis in this part one video, but lo and behold, I don't have any fans for the radiator. So I don't know exactly how far I would get anyway. Uh, and plus I am just short on time. So we're gonna have to do that in part two. Part two, I'm sure we'll, we'll actually start doing some tube bending and get our runs figured out uh, and it should be glorious so thank you guys so much for tuning in be sure to leave any comments questions or concerns of yours in the comments below and feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it it helps a lot guys thank you so much subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon including the rest of this beautiful series and i will see you guys in the next video